Can I start just by asking what went through your head when you saw the audit from B'nai B'rith of anti-Semitic attacks in Canada? Well, noting that this was the highest level of anti-Semitic incidences ever reported in the last 40 years, uh, I have to say uh, I was not uh, surprised because I've been tracking this, but remained very disturbed about it. Uh, we've had similar reports coming in uh, from uh, the UK, which has reported the highest level ever there. France, which not unlike Canada, had a spike of 75% in violent anti-Semitic attacks. Same with regard to Germany and similarly in, in the US. So this is a global uh, phenomenon. And part of it is not unrelated uh, to the uh, Hamas-Israel war in May 2021, where at the time, uh, Jews were targeted in the streets and in their neighborhoods, on the campuses and in their uh, communities. Synagogues were torched, Holocaust memorials defaced, cemeteries desecrated, Jewish institutions vandalized. That led then to the highest spike, both in anti-Semitic hate crimes and anti-Semitic hate speech. So this is really confirming that phenomenon that we saw in May. You know, Mr. Kotler, it is an old problem, but one that, that seems to continually take on new forms. And so I'm wondering, you know, what is it that you think non-Jews sort of fail to appreciate, because, you know, because how could they, of what anti-Semitism actually looks like in 2022? We've seen this again as a global phenomenon, is the increasing mainstreaming, normalization, almost legitimation of anti-Semitism, particularly in the campus culture and the absence of outrage underpinned by indifference and inaction. That's why I was pleased that Canada held the first ever national summit to combat anti-Semitism last July. And then in October, uh, the prime minister made a series of country pledges at the Malmo Global Forum on Holocaust Remembrance and Combating Anti-Semitism to in fact enhance uh, Holocaust education and education re anti-Semitism across a generational lines to combat the intensification of anti-Semitism on the internet, the explosive nature of hate speech, uh, to enhance the adoption and implementation of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition on anti-Semitism, and to develop a national action plan. You know, in light of Holocaust Remembrance Day this week, you know, I've heard you say that it is about remembering, but about remembering to act as well. So beyond the millions of dollars that we've seen in the budget, the most recent budget earmarked for Jewish educational initiatives, as you speak of, tell me, what more action would you like to see this country take that, that would meaningfully demonstrate to you that this government is serious about tackling this problem? Well, we have to combat uh, Holocaust uh, distortion as well as Holocaust denial. In fact, that's the even more uh, serious uh, phenomenon. We saw it even with uh, COVID-19, where Jews, the Jewish people, Israel were blamed for having manufactured the COVID virus, for causing its spread and even profiting from it. Those kinds of, of tropes that are part of a whole industry almost of Holocaust uh, distortion. And there is an international campaign by IRA to protect the facts, and that's something we're going to be engaging in. In fact, as I speak with you, I'm on the eve of a meeting of special envoys for Holocaust Remembrance and Combating Anti-Semitism convening uh, tomorrow in Jerusalem, and I will be sharing with them a national action plan that can be looked at as a global action plan uh, to combat anti-Semitism, organized around the notion that the Holocaust is a paradigm for radical evil, but anti-Semitism is a paradigm uh, for radical hate. Indeed, you can't understand uh, the Holocaust without understanding the centrality of anti-Semitism. Simply put, Jews were murdered at Auschwitz because of anti-Semitism. But anti-Semitism itself did not die at Auschwitz. It remains a bloody canary in the mineshaft of global evil today. And as we've learned only too painfully and too well, while it begins with Jews, it doesn't end with Jews. It's toxic to our democracies. It's an assault on our common humanity. And we need our collective involvement to combat it. Erwin Kotler, good of you to make time to us uh, for us to speak from Jerusalem. Thank you so much. And good speaking with you.